And we're back. I got a bit of vacation in Venice, but now I'm back in Genoa and I worked on the floating panel, you know, task and I've made some significant improvement to share. So if you remember last video, if you don't go watch it again, so you know more views and money, just kidding. Uh, if you remember my last video, I was talking about the fact that I had this issue with actually moving the panel to the center because for some reason the mask, the um, effect behind it, so the blur and the contrast effect were positioned in the wrong position. And that was weird, but luckily I found the solution. And how did I do that? Okay, so what was the actual issue? So you have the panel, which is drawn by an element called the SVG item, which takes the panel SVG. And to actually move them, move it up, I inserted a bottom margin, as you've seen me done for like months at this point. And that worked, that actually worked. However, when I also added a left and right margins, that didn't work because yes, the actual SVG moved, but the mask behind it, which is where the contrast effect and the blur get applied, was didn't, basically it didn't move. So it kept being on the left. And that meant that on the left of the panel SVG, I would get this area with this yellow thingy, which was actually the background blurred and contrast affected. So how did I fix that? Well, I was only quite a bit, <laughs> I was honestly quite a bit annoyed by this bug, but after a bit of time, I realized that even if I put the panel on the top and added a top margin, the mask would still be on the top left, which is wrong. It should have been on the bottom center, but at least on the bottom left. But no, it was always in the top left. And that got me thinking. Okay, so the issue is that it's reading the mask of the panel, but only the size of it, and it's always putting it on the very top left, even though it shouldn't be always there, it should be on the same spot as the panel. And I was like this close to giving up. I was this close. But I thought, wait, let me give just one last try, and I check out the panel code to check if it was actually handling the mask because I thought that the mask was being handled by the SVG item, but it wasn't. It was actually managed by the panel code. As you can see in this part of the code, I will edit stuff in. As you can see in this part of the code, there's uh, the update mask functions function that actually takes the mask from the SVG and tells um, Queen that there, um, there is where you should put the effects. So what's the issue? The issue is that this mask is applied on coordinates 0, 0, regardless of where the actual panel SVG was. But that's an easy fix now, because I just have to take that uh, panel mask um, geometry that I take from the SVG and move it in the same position as the panel. And how do I do that? Well, there is this ni nice function, which is called something like shift, and I just need to give it the coordinates of the panel, and it will shift it to be exactly on the panel position. And that worked, that actually worked. And so I managed to solve the first issue. But then I thought, okay, so I can add margins like this and so I can have like the bottom margin, the top one, the left one, the right one, it works. But what if, what if you maximize an application? Well, if you do that, you will get this strange looking panel with a space around it and then the maximize application. That's weird. I didn't want it to behave like that. So I thought about it and I wanted to go for the simplest possible option because if I go for the complex one, which I'm sure you will want like in the comments, why did you do that? Because it's very complicated and it would require a lot of code. And when I actually publish the merge request, the maintainer, maintainers would be like, you know what, it's not worth it. So don't even waste your time. 
So I wanted to go for something very simple. And I think that what I went for is actually pretty. So I've decided that when the, uh, your application gets maximized on, or is switched to a desktop with a maximized application, the floating panel would actually stop floating and extend to fill all the gaps inside uh, the you know useless space that's around it. So it would actually fill all the space that's actually given to the panel. That would make the panel a bit weirdly, uh, it would be big and it would be a bit weirdly big. But I don't think it looks so bad. If you put some crazy high margin, then it's going to become super crazy big, but I think we can deal with that. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to do some auto hide by default in that case, but for most cases where you won't have a super high margin, I think it looks pretty good. If you switch from, sorry, if you switch from a normal desktop to one with a maximized window, it will just, you know, grow bigger to fit the space and of course it will also get opaque because adaptive transparency. You can also choose it to be always transparent, always opaque, whatever, but as a default, like it won't be default floating, but for a breeze theme with it floating, it looks pretty good. I think I'm quite satisfied. How did I do that? Okay, so basically, because of ad adaptive transparency, I was already checking in the code whether we have maximized windows or not. So that part was easy. However, can I just say to the code, if there is a maximized window, then stop loading? Hell no, don't. <laughs> and the reason for that is that when the panel is floating, if the normal thickness is like, let's say 44, but it's floating, so it needs to be bigger than that, to actually take some space above and below. But if I change the floating status depending on if there is a maximized window or not, that would mean that the actual size of the window of the panel, which not the panel, is the window which draws the panel inside of it, would keep changing and that's really bad. Like it would mess around with the geometry of the windows and I didn't want that to happen. So I had to do something special, which means more code, but I think I managed to, you know, don't let it grow too much. And what I did is, so step one, if there is a maximized window, then do not apply any margin to the SVGs. So the SVGs would actually fill all the available space. And you could say, whoa, that's it. You've done it. But no, <laughs> no. Where's the issue? Well, as we've just, as we've just uh, saw, we are changing the mask position to be bottom right so that it actually fits the floating panel. If we then change the position of the panel, well, the mask needs to get back to zero, zero because now it's actually correct to have a zero, zero mask it shouldn't be moved because the SVG is actually taking on all the, of the space that it has. So how do you do that? Well, it's fairly easy, you could say. You just have to say like uh, in the panel C++ code, check if, the, um, if uh, there is any maximized window and if there is, then reposition again the mask. Pretty easy, right? Uh, no. <laughs> I got many issues when trying to implement this. The issue is that yes, it works except for animations. Because of course you don't want uh, panel margin to go just like whoop, 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 because that's ugly. You want to animate. And what that means is that I have to animate both the SVG and the mask at the same time. How do you do that? Well, for the SVG, there is this solution which is so ugly, I hope it's not like the final solution. I've been given some suggestions, but uh, right now I went with number animations, QML number animations for, the, for all of the anchors margins. 
which works. Uh, I will probably switch to like transition and state. Not sure about how those work perfectly, but we'll get into that with some time. And as far as the um, sorry, as far as the mask goes, because we also need to animate that one. Well, of course, I'm reading the values of the position of the SVG from the actual uh, QML code. But if I just do like read the position of the SVG and then change when that changes, so it's always updated with the correct position, everything breaks. And I'm not sure why, to be honest, it just does. So I thought about something else, which is to do another number animation on uh, an integer property that I set. And by doing that, did I actually do that? Well, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, so you can see here, I took the relevant code that I have two new values called the mask offset X and the mask of offset wise. And the idea is that if there is any maximized window, then that's zero, else it's the floating. And this is exactly the same value that's in the left margin of the SVGs. Now I also take this value and apply a number animation on it. And then I say to the C++ code, check this value and follow it and the number animation here will do the job. And it actually works. It animates the SVG, the mask, and everything. So now what we got working is the behavior on maximized windows. Mostly, I think there is still like one bug, uh, but I forgot about it. And we also got the mask positioning working. What's left to do? Uh, write preter code for this whole number animation thingy, which is so ugly. I also did a thing to make, um, yeah, there was also this issue, I forgot about it. Basically, I had this issue which, you know, if you have the panel which is 44 pixels by default and you want to add some margin to it, you need to find the right place were to say, okay, take actually a bit more space uh, because you also need to fit the margins. If you choose the wrong spot to do that, everything will mess up, obviously. And I actually don't remember if I did manage eventually to do this. I think I did, but I forgot how. So let's actually, let me check it. Ah, yes, uh, basically I added a lot of ugly properties every single time I check the thickness. So basically when you say, hey, how much is uh, the panel thick? And I check every time that uh, I add uh, the margins manually every single time. That's very ugly. That's very ugly and needs to change. The QML code for the panel is also ugly. It needs to switch from number animations to transition as I've been suggested. Done that, I think it's mostly over, finally. This was much longer than I thought. It's mostly done and uh, I've done all of the work in actually reading the values from the SVG theme. How do I do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. And there is a hack that I found, which is like crazy. So do you remember the frame SVG item I talked about? Let me zoom in. Okay, so it has, uh, basically we're taking the SVG item off the panel background, but we also add the prefix for floating. So we're actually checking for the floating panel and when we do that, we take the, this element, we call it floating panel SVG, and we check the margins. And we check that the top margin, the bottom margin, the left margin, the right margin, and we use those to actually set how, by how much it should be floating. More details for com 
uh, or a regarding of what that means for uh, themers. Now, what's the issue? Well, if there is no floating uh, element, which happens for all of the themes that don't support floating, in theory, in theory, we don't want the panel to be floating because if you don't support floating, you shouldn't be floating. However, but that happens if we just say, please take the floating, sorry, please take the floating value. What happens is that it checks whether it exists and if it doesn't, it falls back to the default panel margins, which means that you get the same margins as the default one which means that it thinks that it's actually floating by the same margin as the normal panel inside. So the margin that gets used to separate the panel and the widgets also gets used to separate the screen and the panel, which is wrong. So obviously there is just a property that is able to tell you whether it's actually using the values or a fallback or at least avoid the fallback, right? No, it doesn't. And I've actually struggled to find a good solution about this for months uh, because this happened to me quite, quite frequently. And finally found it. Finally. It's so weird. So basically, there is this property that tells you... Um, where is it? Where is it in floating? Used prefix. What's used prefix? Basically, it says if we fell back to uh, something, please tell me that name. And if we didn't fall back to anything, tell me floating. So basically, what I'm saying is floating panel SVG, did we use the prefix floating or does it not exist? And if it exists, it will say yes, it's floating. If it doesn't, it will return the prefix of the normal panel, which is an empty string. So, um, apostrophe, apostrophe. It didn't work. It didn't work. Why is that? The issue is that it, when it falls back, it actually still thinks that it's working on the floating um, prefix because it's searching the values for the floating prefix which means that it's working on the floating prefix. Even if it doesn't exist, it still returns floating, which is an issue. Luckily, I found the workaround, which is to use a list instead of a string in the prefix. And what a list does is it says, hey, please check floating. If floating doesn't exist, just use the normal panel. So basically now it's us actually asking the SVG, please, if the floating uh, element doesn't exist, just check for the normal panel margins. And the difference, that's the normal behavior. We didn't even have to ask. But now that we're asking, if the floating element actually doesn't exist, then it falls back to the empty string as we requested and because we requested it now it actually returns an empty string in the use prefix as well that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy but it works and this way i can actually check whether we're floating or not if we are floating then it's going to return the floating prefix else it won't Nice. So now we know everything, the, don't we? Yeah, the, as I was saying, the code is quite ugly. I don't remember if, uh, if I was, ah, uh, yes, I was talking about the integration. Yes, basically now that we actually are able to read uh, the margins of the floating element and be sure that those are actually the margins of the floating animal element and nothing else, we just, you know, use them as how much it should be floating. And then I use this as a value for the mask offset. I use this as a value for the SVG offset, or rather the SVG margins. And then this value also gets read by the C++ panel code, 
By the way, if you don't understand this C++ QML division in the code, I've done a video about that, uh, check it out. It's like understanding plasma code or something, plasma panels code or something. And uh, these values also get gets uh, read by the C++ code and used to actually increase the thickness by the correct amount. And that was it, that was it. We have mostly done it. I think that uh, another week or two and the merge request will be ready and I'll be uh, ready to actually start talking about the next cool merge request that I will be working on, which is pretty cool. It's so boring, it's cool. And if you like these devlogs, uh, which are um, not actually me coding, but me explaining what I did. I hope they're a bit more instructive and entertaining than the normal ones. And if you like that, I'm, keep, I'm still working on this and, you know, putting effort into this and KD Plasma as a whole. Uh, I got a donation button like somewhere. And that was it. That was it. Thank you for uh, your attention and See you in the next video.